Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, this is the day that we have been waiting. This is the day of Pentecost. And uh, the theme is like last week, but it's only part two. Pentecost. Is it relevant? Well, I think you know it's relevant, but we just want to make sure if you have some few questions, you know, try to answer those questions for you. I know the devil is a liar. He tried to divert people and try to cause them to lose the focus on what God is doing. I believe that around the world, the people that have been praying for this, for this 50th day after the Passover, but the enemy also has done a lot of commotion to cause the people to lose focus. But uh, if you're a child of God, or you're anticipating God to touch you, or you have the conviction you don't know how to do it, I just want to encourage you, don't lose hope. The prophet Joel said it very clear in Joel chapter 2, verse 20. And it will come about after this, I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. Now, King James Version says, on all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Now, <clears throat> here's something that I want us to understand. The prophet is saying, and it shall come to pass afterward that our poll. What is polling? That polling is something that you cannot help if it's poured on you. Say, let me give an example. If someone has a bucket or a drum of paint, they pour it on me. My whole body will be drenched in that paint. My, those clothes will be completely stained. Now, here's what Jesus did. He poured the Spirit of God upon our lives. And he says, I'll pour, it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour on my spirit. The Holy Spirit is poured upon our, our flesh. Now, for us to comprehend the subject of who the Holy Spirit is, we need to, conti to continue in this discussion. We need to understand the meaning of Pentecost and uh, what it represents. You know, last week I tried to emphasize, and I'm going to say it again. Pentecost in the Hebrew Bible, Pentecost is uh, an annual harvest festival that occurred seven weeks after Passover. But it became an important Christian holiday after God or Jesus Christ poured out the Holy Spirit upon Jerusalem. The Jerusalem church on the first Pentecost after Jesus was resurrected. What do I mean about that? All the time they used to celebrate this day known as Pentecost, after the Passover. But when Jesus left, they had to pull. He had to pull the Spirit upon all the flesh. The ministry, all the Spirit ministry to people in the Old Testament times was not the same as it has been since the day of Pentecost. Now, in the olden days, this is what happened. The Holy Spirit looked for a willing vessel and he or she was imparted by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was anointed to be the prophet. He was anointed to be the pastor, to be an apostle or anything. But now it's different. Anyone who is willing, anyone who is obedient, anyone who has been waiting, he can receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whatever it was, the Lord made it quite clear it would be different after Pentecost. Don't you and I rejoice that we are living in this time when the Holy Spirit has been poured upon us. If one takes a close look, we will discover how repeatedly the Lord spoke of the coming 
of the Holy Spirit, who at that time was already present in his conversation with his disciples in the upper room, Jesus kept on saying these words. One of the things that he said in book of John, chapter 15, verse 26, it says, when the helper, so he is the Holy Spirit, he is the helper, comes whom I'll send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. Oh, glory to God. So now Jesus here is telling us, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm going to send the helper in the areas where you cannot comprehend or be able to do anything. This spirit of truth who will proceed. I want you to understand it this way. The Holy Spirit is not proceeding from anywhere else. He is of coexistence with the Father. Like last week I said, the God the Father was there for the creation of the heaven and the earth. God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, is there for the redemption. He came to redeem us, buy us back from our sins. And he made us real to be purchased now where we can come and cry, Abba, Father, and enter into the whole of holy boldly. Though our sins were contaminated and filth, once we repent, we are justified. And that word justified, it means just as if you have never sinned. Now, God realized that's not enough because he knew how human nature was very dependent upon him. Then, he says, but the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. Who is me? Jesus. Now we begin to see here the spirit who is the help has come. Then the other thing, Jesus here he also tells us in John chapter 16, verse 7 and 8, where he is now declaring, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Oh, praise God. Now who don't want to see the father or the parent to leave you? Yeah, that's the way how it is. Jesus had to let us to fry, to soar in the skies uh, like an eagle. Unless, and he's using that word, unless I go away, the advocate, who is the advocate? This is the lawyer, the one who represents us, the one who goes before the Father to plead our case. The advocate will not come to you. Now, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Father. Everyone, when you have a case to answer, you need an advocate. You need an attorney. Now, the Holy Spirit becomes an attorney. We know the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He rails accusation day and night. He condemns you and I. He tries to find fault. He lingers in the past. He tried to contaminate us and twist us. And they make us stay guilt and completely disassociated to the point where we begin to think, I'm no good for nothing. But here's what he's saying here in John. He says, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and the righteous and the judgment. All right, praise God. What is this advocate doing now? What is this lawyer? He's coming to represent us. He's coming to fight the battle. He's coming to put a hold to the enemy. When the devil tried to rail accusation before the Father, that's why I always tell people to say, be careful how you judge people, because the Holy Spirit knows. And the only one who knows how a person has repented or surrendered before God is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Now this, the Holy Spirit is there to remove you from the guilt, from the condemnation. What does this show us? This indicates both that the Spirit was at work then and that his work would take on a different character after Pentecost. Now, when the Lord summarized the contract, he said the Spirit abides 
in you. The Spirit abides in you. Now, to those who know English very well, that's a present tense. Amen. That means the Holy Spirit right now is abiding in us. You know, you got the Spirit of God abiding in us now. He says, but he said the Spirit abides in you and he will be in you. That word, he will be, the little English that I learned is future tense. Now you see now, here God is showing us the present tense, how the Spirit is abiding in us. Now on this day, to those who are waiting, who are saying, I need the Holy Spirit, he says, he will be in us. Now how do you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How do you receive it? Just yield yourself to the Lord. He will be there to fill you with an unction. Now, there are people who say, well, I'm not a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you need to be born again. You need to ask Jesus Christ to come in your life. And once he comes in your life, he will help you to understand what the Holy Spirit is talking about. Now, John chapter 14 verse 7 says, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Now I understand why most of the people, even some of the denominations, they do not accept the Holy Spirit. They talk about the Holy Spirit, but they limit the function of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they are afraid of the truth. They are afraid of his conviction. Because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. Wow, praise be to God. Glory to God. So now here, God is revealing us on this day of Pentecost, the benefit of who this Holy Spirit is, and what he is doing in our lives. Now, coming back to our main story about Joel, the prophet, we see something that was unique. Joel was a prophet who lived in a different era than the time that we are living now. I call this time the new gospel times, showing us how the future with the Holy Spirit in our midst will be like, showing us how this day is like. And that's what the world doesn't want you to know. The world he will fight to keep us in ignorance. Now the Bible says God has winked on the days of ignorance. He's commanding all men everywhere to repent. Now are we repenting to understand him? Here's what the, the prophet is saying here. The prophet had encouraged the nation to repentance. Why is he encouraging to repentance? He's encouraging them to repentance because he wants this promise to be in them. By announcing the temporal blessings. You see, the prophet here to these people is announcing the temporal blessings. But we have the permanent blessings. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. They had the temporal blessings which would be consequent upon them. Here's one of the things that he said. They would get the former rain and they would get the latter rain. Oh, glory to God. So now he is promising us of the former that was there, but not compared to the latter rain that you and I we are in. Then he goes on also where he encourages them. He says the, the flows will be filled with wheat and the fats would overflow with wine and oil. Ha! Then he goes also to say some things that are more important. Desolation would vanish. Plenty would return. Oh, glory to God. I wish somebody can say with me, wherever you are, say these words. Maybe you have experienced some difficult, some trying moments, some accusations, some slander, some mockery. People trying to hold you on your yesterday. Don't let your yesterday hold you your yesterday is gone. Today is another new day. And God has the new blessings. 
Don't let your guilt cause you to miss your blessings. Don't let your shame cover you from going forward with God. David, one of the greatest men of God in the Bible. He had fallen several times, but he rose also a double time, more than he had fallen. Now, here's what I'm saying. God here, he is trying to show us desolation would vanish. Plant would return. I wish somebody can say, thank you, Jesus, for the plant. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the plant. You are pulling the plant. This was the lowest fear of benediction consequent upon their repentance. Now, here's something that I want you to see. Now, the prophet mentions the higher blessings to fall. The spiritual of which the temple was but a type. Remember, the temple was a typology of what was going to come in the future. Oh, glory. We are living in that time. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You wonder why I get so crazy for Jesus. I would rather be a fool for the king of kings. And just love him like never before. Because of the blessings that he shows us. There are lessons to learn in every promise. The promise, no doubt, had refer reference to the messianic age through Joel. Joel may not have been aware of what you were saying, but God was speaking to him of something. It was not fulfilled at Bethlehem, nor at Gethsemane, nor at Calvary, nor at Mount Olivet. It was fulfilled now. <clears throat> now, here's something that I'm saying. I said it was not fulfilled at Bethlehem, nor at Gethsemane, or nor at Calvary, nor at Mount Olivet. It was still afterward, it was partially accomplished on at Pentecost Day. Though there was concealed it in a deeper meaning than the Pentecost would impact the entire significance of which we are as yet ignorant. Why am I saying like that? We are as yet ignorant because there are some people who believe that miracles and signs were for the apostles. They don't believe you can pray for the dead people to rise. Here are some of the promises that Jesus gave us. He says, those who believe in my name, they will do greater things than these that I have done. Why? <clears throat> because the Holy Spirit, the helper, is with us. Now, if you remember in the beginning, I said, when the helper comes. Now, Jesus, he raised the man who was in the grave, Lazarus buried for three days. And he comes and says, come forth. <clears throat> and those death barrier clothes that they are loosened and he comes leaping. Now, here's Jesus here, commanding us and giving us an assurance. He says, those who believe in my name, greater works than these that I have done, they shall do. We see Peter try to entertain. That's why I'm saying, you know, even then, we are not aware of the fulfillment and the fully promise that we are given. We have these things that God has promised and that we ought to walk in. By the shadows of Peter, people that were healed. Jesus raised the, the dead man, claims the blind, the lepers, the blind eyes are seen. So, if that happened, and Jesus we know is not a son of man that can lie, nor repent. He, he says, greater works, why can you and I today enter in an agreement on this day of Pentecost, and they begin to pray that we see signs and wonders, we see miracles, we we'll see the people that are rooting, trying to destroy this nation, they can stop if we can get down on our knees and pray. Amen. As we begin to pray, we'll begin to see the injustice begin to go down. The evil people that are filled with all evilness, they will be completely stopped. But the righteous will raise their hands and magnify. May God arise and his enemy be scattered. Now, what is he saying right now? 
Acts chapter 2, verse 17, is fulfilling the words of the prophet Joel. What is he saying? In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Or are young men seeing visions? Or they're waiting to see what is going to happen. Your old men will dream dreams. Are we dreaming dreams? Oh, hallelujah. I don't know whether I, which category I, I, I am there. I know I'm not young. I'm not old. I'm in between there. So that means I have the benefit of seeing visions and dreaming dreams. <laughs> Praise be to God. <laughs> because I'm not young and I'm not old. So I'm in between. So God, I pray today, give anoint me to see visions and to dream dreams. Amen. Glory to God. We live in this afterward of time and know its meaning as did not the prophets of the old. The prophets of the old didn't know what time they were living in. But the afterward of the kingdom of heaven has yet to evolve the universal reign of the spirit of God. Joel owns the significance of the spirit outpouring. He says this word. I will pull. What is pulling? Pulling is like someone. I have this water here. And I wish I had something. Then someone begin to pull. And as he pulls, this water just comes down. And it's just falling out. I poured this water, but the carpet is expensive. <laughs> the people here at the church are not letting me do that. But they pull that water and the God you know is pulling that spirit is coming upon us John the significance of the spirit of, of on the outpouring our pull this outpouring of the Holy Spirit was to be of divine origin not anywhere else but divine origin it is the alone prerogative of the eternal God to bestow the spirit upon mankind. Now, we are seeing this. Joe did not connect the gift of the spirit in any way with himself. And this is the problem that mankind has. God gives you a present. And when he gives you that present, you are not rejoicing. If a, a person promises me, I'll give you a billion dollars, I'll be waiting and I'll be praying. And I'll be trusting God that one day I'll receive it. If he lied, I'll bring him before God. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, but, you know, but I'll make sure that I hold that to that promise. And it keeps me awake every night, every day. Why? Because it's a promise. But the promise that we have with God is beyond any money that can be mentioned. It's beyond any silver under God. It's beyond anything. Now, Joel is failing to connect. Or with any agency he could command. These are the promises that God is giving you. If you only had the revelation or the rhema, God would have released them. Now, did Peter on the day of Pentecost, just imagine Peter has been with Jesus. That's why I call Peter is a sanguine. You know, he just wants, he's a good guy, but who wanted to be in everything. Prophets and the prophet, apostles, however distinguished they may have been, were not the authors, but the channels of the spiritual energy. Now here's God, he is revealing something. Man cannot give the Holy Spirit to his fellow man. Only Jesus could give us. I remember the late Ren had a bunker one time many years ago. I was in a crusade when he said, How many were here yesterday when I was preaching about the baptism of the water? And so many people raised their hands. And they said, uh, Now I want to let you know that the one who baptizes you with water is man. Your pastor baptizes you with water. He stands in the pool, a baptism pool. He dips you in there. And when you come out, you are sucked even the top of your nose 
is sought. He says, but today, I'll be speaking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he ran had a bunker goes on. He says, Jesus is standing in his pool, his pond of blood that was shed on Calvary. And he says, when he baptizes you, he's going to dip you right in his pool. And when you come out, even the top of your nose will be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And then you'll be able to function in the will of the Father. Huh. Thoughtful, thoughtful books cannot be stored, no matter how profound and well structures may be. Organization cannot impact you with the Holy Spirit. The only one that can impact you with the Holy Spirit is Jesus. So wherever you are on this Pentecost day, Pentecost, is it relevant? Say, this is my day. I need the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon me. Do not harden your heart because of some religion or some books that you read that denies this. Do not go in doctrinal debate. I'm giving you the scriptures to prove I did not write these scriptures. And I'm not trying to be hermeneutically correct, but I'm saying according to what is written in the word of God. This is the testimony of the scripture. This is in conformity with the human experience and with the moral inability of man to originate good. God is showing us something here that we need. To be open to. Oh, what God wants us to do is to consecrate ourselves unto the Lord. Hence, we must go to God for it. Ask God, God, I'm a willing vessel. You are listening to me right now. Wherever you are, you say things that stand still. I don't understand what is going on. I don't understand what is happening. But I want to let you know right now, you can ask the Holy Spirit and say to him, and God, here I am. Allow me to be yours. Use me. Drench me into the pool of your blood. Fill me with your glory. Cause me to see vision, visions and to dream dreams. Anoint me to lay hands on the sick cancer gold. Blind eyes open, dumb and deaf hear and talk, crippled rise and walk. Every man of diseases, the dead, demonic people when you walk in the streets, asking God, God Almighty anoint me, that as I'm walking, if there is a crazy maniac, let them receive the deliverance. Let them see and feel the presence of God. God is doing it now. The point is that, are you ready? Are you willing? We must comply with the moral condition necessary to its reception. Ask God, God, I'm here. Use me. We must give him the praise and the glory for its advent in any measure. We, all true spiritual emotion, which is holy, is from above. You see me do things that I cannot do when I'm not preaching. It's because when I'm standing in the pulpit, I am a vessel of God. Praise be to God. The extent of the pulling of the Holy Spirit. I'll pour my spirit on what? On all the fresh. That's the extent. You know, who is to receive every fresh are you the fresh? Yes, you can receive the baptism, the spirit of God upon all human fresh. I didn't say animals. I say human fresh. All the fresh. The divine spirit wants to be poured out without distinction of age, male or female, country or origin. It should be given to universal men. If you are in France right now, 
You can understand what I'm saying in English. The Holy Spirit is baptizing you. If you are in Norway and you can understand you're in Norwegian, God is pulling the Holy Spirit. If you're in Finland and you speak Finnish, but you also understand the English, God is pulling the Holy Spirit. If you're in Sweden, you speak Swedish, but you understand English, God is pulling the Holy Spirit. If you're in Africa, no matter which part of Africa, there's so many languages in Africa, God is pulling the Holy Spirit. If you're in Palestine, if you're in India, you're in, in uh, Afghanistan, wherever you are, you are in Iran, God is pulling the Holy Spirit upon you. Just be that conduit. Open yourself and say, God, pour him right now on me. It should be given to universal human being, every vessel. Be a vessel that is with me. It would not be confined to the covenant nation. That covenant nation, as we know it, is Israel. He didn't confine it that the people that need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they need to come to Israel. He gave it to as men as who are willing. All over the world, here in the United States, even to the people who are rooting, get a, a, a time and moment away and say, what am I doing? Am I a human being? Can God help me? I need you. Trust my word right now. If you sit in the hotel thinking what you're planning to do, believe me, it will change your course during daytime. You literally not go there to root. You go there to do what is right. Because the Holy Spirit will convict you, will be poured upon your life, and he will change you. He, he is the Holy Spirit poured to the poor, to the slave, to the unlamed, to the black, to the white, to the brown, to every color, every race. Receive the gift. The gift is for you and those who are far away. That means to the generation upon generation, if it Jesus tarries. Hallelujah. It will be poured out, not drop by drop. Oh, glory to God. I don't know where I got this one, but I love it. I'm going to say it one more time again. I said it will be poured out, not drop by drop, but it poured out. Glory to God. God is pouring it. Oh, hallelujah. Bring that place there. Let me show you how it's going to be poured out. It's going to be poured like this. It's going to be poured out like this. Ooh. This is the way how God is going to be pouring the Holy Ghost. So you imagine how I have poured this water here. And the God pouring it into all mankind is pouring it upon your life. It's transforming you. It's changing you. It's bringing you to the level on understanding. Once the Holy Spirit is inside you, your life changes. And you are going to generate so many enemies. Because... Those who doesn't know the Holy Spirit like you do, they will judge you, they call you names, they wish you dead, they'll everything that they can do because they'll be jealous of you. But don't worry, those who are jealous of you, they'll set you up, they'll trap you, they'll cause commotion, they'll talk about you, they'll laugh at you, they'll mock you, they'll call you all kinds of names. But believe me, nobody can mock the Holy Spirit. You know, they can mock you, but believe me, they'll grieve that Holy Spirit inside you. So, it's not drop by drop. Glory to God, I love that. But as mighty shall even, you know, in large quantities, as the rain after the prayer of Elijah. Ha, hallelujah. You remember when Elijah was praying, what happened, right? He said, and how he changed everything. The gift of the Holy Spirit is not limited by any restraint upon the divine ability to give. It is not limited by time. Sin cannot stop it. Hallelujah. Sin cannot hinder this spirit. For the grace abides much more than sin. 
The effect of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me speak a little bit here about the effect of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and how it's coming here. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Sons and daughters, oh, glory to God. I pray for my sons. I pray for my grandchildren. And pray for your sons and sons and the grandchildren. Pray for all human beings, young generation. Young generation, it's time for you to prophesy. It's time for you to speak the word. Do not be hindered. Do not be afraid. Do not be restrained. Do not be confused. Do what God wants you to do. Do not let man's doctrine hinder you. Young sons and daughters, you must prophesy. This is a promise to you from God, not David Shemenda. From God and the us old men, oh no, I'm not. <laughs> but your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. So I said earlier, and I'm in between. So I'm dreaming dreams and I'm seeing vision. Oh Father, help us to see these things. This does not limit to the universal application of the promise, but simply gives examples of those who shall realize who the Holy Spirit is. And the effect, it will be upon them. Now, here's something on the effects that I want you to understand. In the early age of the church, the miraculous gifts of the Spirit were imparted, but they have ceased instead. If you look right now, this generation that we are in, they're not even the miracles like the miracles that Moses did when he crossed you know, the river with so many people. And when the enemy was pursuing them, they were drowned. We don't see the miracles of Elijah. We don't see the miracles of Elisha. We don't see the miracles of Jehoshaphat. We don't see the miracles of the old man, Abraham, the great patriarch, the father of the gospel. We don't see those miracles. Why? It's because we have compromised. There's too much knowledge that we begin to try to debate what God can do. We cannot debate what God can do. We need to obey. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. We have illumination of the soul in a bondage, but you know, in a much more insight into the truth of God, whereby we are arguing with God. Oh Lord, you know, I see what you're saying, but my mind, I've been illuminated to think this way, but this is not the right thing. Come on, lift your eyes unto the hills from whence your help comes from and ask God to brighten your vision and your destiny and to show you what is there for you in store. Better is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. For these are the things which now accompany and they reveal the presence of God. What is that that is accompanying? The Holy Spirit. That means every person that has opened himself and that has allowed the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is ready to use you. Now, what if the Holy Spirit is ready to use us, here's something that I want you to see. What is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? What is going to be the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? Joel appears to move in the sake of moral conviction of the eschatological hopes. Here's what Joel says. He has been called the prophet of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, but he is not really realizing. Joel was predicting of the coming of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit was there. I'll pour out these words suggest abundance of gift. So now... What's the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? Is the abundance of gifts. What are these abundance of gifts? The word of knowledge. The word of wisdom. The interpretation of tongues. Miracles. Healing. And uh, goes on. Prophets. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. We begin to see the abundance of gifts. The infusion was to be of God's Spirit that is the Holy Spirit now is infusing us with power from on high. He's telling us things that 
are completely unique into our lives. He's revealing to us the importance of what we need to understand. The extension of that manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. That means upon all mankind, giving the idea of the universal re religion, not religion, relationship. Giving us that universal relationship where God is saying, I have anointed, go cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, cause the crippled to rise and walk. Open the blind eyes. That's the manifestation there that he's giving us. When are these things supposed to be? Now, today, this very hour, wherever you are, you can pray. I've seen when I have prayed, God, I've done mighty wonders. God, I've performed the things. When I have come to God with a consecrated heart and ask him to move in a mighty way, I have seen him. Do things that are beyond human recognition. I've seen the crippled rise and walk. I've seen, you know, I've prayed for the dead come back to life. I was with my good friend, Joe Fry, one time. When I prayed for a dead person come back to life. These are the promises of God. Hallelujah. God can do these things. I've seen, you know, the crippled rise and the walk. Lou James and I, one time we prayed for a young lady that is living, she's living here in Buffalo, who had come for the memorial at the funeral. And we saw up to this very moment, we can take you to this young lady. She is walking. She's not only walking, she's running. Amen. And then she started bringing people to the church who are in the wheelchairs so that we pray for them. You know, God is a good God. God is able to do miracles, signs, and wonder. Upon all fresh, that means upon all mankind, giving the idea of the universal what? Relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, the gift is said to descend upon all fresh, naming that which is the lowest in our nature. Our fresh is the lowest in our nature. Because when it perishes, it rots in the ground. It's eaten by the worms of this ground. But yet God saw it profitable. And he saw it to be wise to honor men. You are honored. So that's why you don't need to get to the level of debating and arguing. It's a great honor that we have the gift from on high. That you and I, we, he has given us the fullest measure that we can contain and handle. Because if he allowed the Holy Spirit, my flesh will burst. My flesh, because it's sinful, it was born in sin, and it repents, it has to die daily. You know, the Bible says, I die daily. Because if I don't die daily, I can't contain him. When he comes, he's pure and holy. So now, as we die daily, he comes and he renews himself into us. This is what Pentecost, my dear friends, means. The gift is said to descend. So this gift descended. If the gift descended, what are we supposed to do? Be that recipient of the flow and the outpouring that will blast the world into the things of God. God has anointed us to bless into this world to bring revival. To see the power and the move of God in a mad way. See three effects of, this, of the Spirit's presence and operation in the soul of man. I'm going to mention some things here. In, you know, about three of them. That shows what God is doing in a great practical way. The nature of his work. Three words to explain the spirit ministry to people in the Old Testament. What is he doing? He was in certain ones. Follow recognized that the spirit was in Joseph. That was in the Old Testament. Follow is looking and says, man, I, I can see this young man. <laughs> there is the spirit of God in him. You cannot question. You cannot doubt. You know. Why? If you read uh, Genesis 41 verse 38, it says, So Father asked them, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom 
is the Spirit of God. Oh, glory to God. One in whom is the Spirit of oh, God. Follow a heathen that had hardened men in Egypt. He's realizing, I need the man. Like the Father did not understand this was the Holy Spirit, but later revelation seems to make this clear. The Spirit was in Joshua, which is why God chose him. Amen. This is the reason why God, God chooses those that have the Holy Spirit. Now, if you read the Bible, it will show you. So the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, the son of Nani, a man in whom is the spirit of leadership. A man in whom is the spirit of leadership. Let me speak to the leaders that are listening to me. Some of the leaders, they are struggling because they don't have the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, your work will be easier. And you'll be able to do things that no other man can do. Because what you'll be, you'll be just a vessel. And the Holy Spirit will be accomplishing things. I've had times when I've spoken to people. I've spoken to all kinds of people in leadership, people in higher places that I have spoken to. And at the end, they have asked me, where did this wisdom come from? I've asked myself, where did this wisdom come from? But at the end, I have answered that question from the Holy Spirit. Amen? And lay your hands on him. So the spirit of leadership is coming on Joshua as Moses. That's why you need to be imparted with the people who have no jealous or competition spirit or anything, but to be imparted for the spirit of leadership. The one who lays hands to bring you into that leadership, that's the spirit that you carry. Moses was chosen by God. Glory to God. As Moses was chosen, he says, lay hands on who? This young man. Who is this young man? Joshua. Because Joshua was about to take over. Oh, hallelujah. Joshua is about to take the vision to another level. Remember, Moses brought them out of the land of depression where they were being butchered day and night. He caused them to be intact despite there were some few rebellious people in the wilderness. But he maintained and then we begin to see the law being established as Moses is coming down from the mountain. God is doing some unique thing. Now God is about to go to be with his, the maker, the master in heaven. And the God now he realizes, whom am I supposed to leave and choose here? Then God has seen the spirit of diligence on this young man by the name of Joshua. And he says, the spirit of leadership and lay hands on Joshua for the spirit of what? Leadership. That's why when we are doing or passing over, we lay hands on young men so that they can carry and they take the vision to another level that we have never taken it. I've always told my child, my children, my boys, I said, if you only do what I have done and stop over there, you have failed and I have failed God. But I want you to take another step and do greater things and be used of God. Go ahead. Let God anoint you. Do not let this world tell you who you are. Do not let this world identify you or you know, put you in a box and let you to be programmed. Rise up. Shoot like an eagle. Go above, so above the things of this world. Tell the world we can never be limited. I say this to my spiritual sons. I say this to my physical children. I say this to my friends. Do not let uh, the world determine your progress. Do not let your blessings, you know, do not make your permanent arrangement on temporary convenient blessings. For God has something greater in your life. And the, the third thing that we see here is the spirit was also in Daniel. These are the three things that I'm trying to bring you to understand. Daniel chapter 4 verse 8 says, Finally Daniel came into my presence uh, and I told him the dream. And he is called Belshazzar. And after Bel 
Teza, something like that. <laughs> I'm not a Hebrew, but you understand what I'm saying. Praise be to God. After the name of my God and the spirit of the holy gods is in him. The spirit of the what? The holy gods is in him. Now, we begin to see God in this time. He's telling us there was one person here endued or clothed with the power from on high on the day of Pentecost so for what God wanted on, on in the olden days. Now, that spirit is upon everybody. Is anyone crying for wisdom? Is anyone crying for the gifts of words of wisdom? Is anyone crying for the word of knowledge? Is anyone crying for the interpretation of times? Is anyone crying for miracles? Is anyone crying for healing? Is anyone crying for discerning of the spirit? You want when the spirit that is not ready, when it's in your presence, you can discern this spirit is not a good spirit. Last yesterday, my daughter and I we took a drive, and we we're discussing about what is happening. And I, I began to share with my daughter, and I started telling her about the spirit of discernment. How we need to design the time that we are in and design the time. I said there will be so many people that are going to be sucked in into something that they don't believe in because they want to be identified or to have the fame by identification with the crowd. And they end up getting themselves in trouble. When they're in trouble, they don't know how to come out there because they have done something that is not part of them. They have just been incited. I said, stand by yourself, stand alone, and then look at things, design the spirit, and then ask God to say, is this that I'm seeing? Is this that I'm hearing from you? Now, how do I dissect this? How do I go forward? What do I do from this time onward? What kind of prayers do I pray? How do I stand aloof from what is happening? How do I, I rise above the waters that are trying to drown me? And as we are discussing with my daughter, my daughter started saying, Dad, I sense the presence of God. God was in that vehicle. As we were driving around, he came around, and I started praying for my daughter. And my daughter started praying for me as well. And there was that you know, involvement of understanding that God is doing something. The Spirit came, came upon some. The preposition used here depicts everyone that is some. That means those who are willing. The Holy Spirit would have come on everybody on this day of Pentecost. But because some are still debating. Because this is what you understood. You know, I grew up with a grandmom in a Priglim Holiness Church. And my grandmom, you know, who put on a long dress. And she was a woman of God. That I learned to pray from my grandmom. You know, I remember when she came. You know, we used to be afraid when grandmama come to visit our home with my parents. Because my grandmom will pray if there's a demon, he's going to run out of the house. Praise be to God. My grandmama knew who Jesus was. Knew, understood the glory of God. You know, I still have an uncle who says, David... You know, my uncle who lives in South Africa right now says, I see what you got right now that, you know, is from your grandma. My grandma was vicious. You know, believe me, you identify a wrong spirit in a heartbeat and you cut it into pieces and that is spirit. Oh, get out. I remember my grandma one time came and in the evening, you know, she said, I perceive in this place there are demonic forces. And he says, I'm going to cast them out. And I said, man, this old woman, she's full of dreams. <laughs> and I was young by then. I didn't understand what grandma was trying to do. And she started praying. I remember I was a young man like it was yesterday. Dogs started running and barking. Dogs literally started barking. And my grandmama kept on saying, be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone. In the and believe me, all my cousins, my brothers, every member of my family, my relatives knows that woman was vicious. The old lady from the Methodist church who could sing songs from old hymnals, trust and obey. 
For there is no other way to be in helping Jesus. But you got to trust and obey. That old lady raised this and nest us and the brothers to understand the things of the Holy Spirit. I miss my grandmother because without her I was not going to be where I am now. But she infused us with that power of the Holy Spirit. I say this, I feel tears coming into my eyes. Because literally without that dear lady there, I was not going to be standing over here magnifying the name of God. She was faithful. She was righteous. She walked in a holy way. She prayed for each and every one of her grandchildren. All my cousins today, they know that they are serving God because of that seed that we received from that grandma. And she also prayed for our children, even when she's gone. You know, we still have that residue that what grandma left into our lives. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the Holy Spirit. It's not a simple thing. The Holy Spirit is something that you can receive it as he begins to come upon your life. And change you. Glory to God. As he changes us. You know the Bible tells us. Very clear. In the book of Exodus 31 verse 3. And I have filled him with the spirit of God. With wisdom. With understanding. With the knowledge. And with all kinds of skills. Glory to God. Help me brethren. As I enjoy myself here. <laughs> Spirit of God. Hallelujah. This seemed to be special enablement to lead craftsmen as they walked in the tabernacle. Amen, amen. Glory to God. This subject wrecks me whenever I speak about this. And I feel the presence of God. The presence of the Spirit with His fruits and the gifts carries with it a higher standard. And an ideal than that of the old covenant. An ideal that is more than of the old covenant. Now, the last days in the New Testament, we begin to see this Holy Spirit being described. How is it the first and the second advent? There are certain uh, special and the peculiar manifestation of the Spirit. God at times vouches a gracious outpouring, both upon the church and the world. So we live in the world whereby, because we are not descended from, the Spirit of God is upon us. The Spirit of God is in our lives. I have a friend of mine who is well endowed, and he's blessed and he has his own private plane. And they said one day they were up in the air. And they said, uh, David, I knew we were going to die. He says, everything that would go wrong went wrong. He says, well, they hit the turbulence and the plane began to dive. And he says, uh, the captain was a Christian. And he says, he, he said to them, the gentleman that works with him, with both his captains, they pray. He says, gentlemen, we have to pray because we have hit a difficult moment. But by God's grace and the Holy Spirit in our midst, everything was going to be okay. He says, I was sitting there. He says, I started saying, God, I've lived a life. Even in my failing, I still returned back and glorified you. And he said, uh, all of a sudden, he says, I saw someone tapping my my thing, he says, uh, the turbulence is over. The plane is not damaged. Mm -hmm. Look through the window. He says, I looked at the window. He says, high up there, I saw a dove mm -hmm. sitting on the wing. He says, high up there, I saw a dove sitting on the wing. He says, the more, he says, I was looking forward. I said, I want to catch this dove when we get to the land. He says, as we begin to descend, getting closer to the ground. I couldn't see the dove. He says, don't tell me that was not an angel of God. God 
is able to do more than we can ask him. That's why this Holy Spirit, he is there. He is an advocate. When we are going through difficult times, he speaks on our behalf. He fights the battles on our behalf. That's why the Bible, when it says, touch not the anointed one of man that do my prophets no harm. What he is saying is dangerous when you are dealing with the people that are walking close to God. Have we any ground for expecting any such remarkable visitation in this present day? If I can ask you a question to the people who are listening in the first, the in the Facebook line there, and to the members of Home City Church, have we, have you in your home during this COVID-19, through what has been happening, do you have any ground of expecting such a remarkable visitation on this pleasant day? Do you have, whereby you can say, God, you know, Brother David, I have been waiting for the move of God. In examining the structure of prophets, Joe will not the foreign things. The call to repentance. Always, if you want this baptism of the Holy Spirit, or you want the Spirit, let's repent. And as we repent, we'll see what God will do. Address the professing people of God. Repentance is number one. If we don't repent, there is nothing that will happen. The prophets of blessings culminating in the promise of the Spirit. That's number two. We need to look at the promise of blessings. What are the blessings that the Holy Spirit brings? Hallelujah. The announcement of judgment to be inflicted upon the enemies of God and His church. I don't want to be an enemy of God. You know, because there is judgment there. That is beyond measure. You know, there are people that literally oppose us. And if they do anything to cause other children of God to stumble and never try to help them to rise, God wants us to be there to be the friend of His. I love the song that Israel heard on saying, I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend. I'm a friend of God. Who is your friend today? The sequence of events took place in connection with Pentecost. Then, the universal preaching of repentance to the Jewish nation. Ha! Huh. I'm believing that one of my assignments in the near future is going to be traveling with people, going to Israel, and to show them these landmarks where Jesus was being baptized, where he did everything. The outpouring of the Spirit, where the outpouring of the Spirit of God came. The infliction of a signal vengeance upon those who proved themselves to be the deadly enemies of the true church of the living God. So it is important. The gospel needs to be dispersed to the world. And we need to declare it with clarity, enthusiasm, with understanding. We need to let the world know the importance of who God is. This is where we see the Holy Spirit exhibiting the leading features of Christianity. What is it doing? It is important to understand the gospel dispensation that it was to be characterized by spirituality. What is that spirituality that it was going to be characterized with? I will pour out my spirit. And I want, I'll be closing here momentarily. I, I haven't even touched this subject. I'll be touching it in weeks to come. But what is this saying there? He wants to pour out the spirit to mankind. For my the spirit dwelled with man. Whereas former the Spirit dwelled with men, now he dwells in men. Men, when I say in men, that means men and women. God is dwelling in us now. I'm speaking about the Holy Spirit dwelling in us now. 
There is a sense in which the Spirit was not given to men before the day of Pentecost. Well, I explained he was, but it was individuals. But now it's whosoever. And you, brethren from Home City Church, you are whosoever. You, brethren, who are listening here in Buffalo, New York, who are listening around the world, here in America, all over the world, in Africa, you are whosoever. This sense is explained. Jesus was the first human being in whom the Spirit abode. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me and you keep my commandments, I'll ask the Father. He'll give you another helper. Who is this helper? To be with you for how long? Forever. You know, I read a book that it says when Smith Wigglesworth, when he died, and the man who was at the grave, as they were lowering his casket to the ground, beneath the ground, the Spirit of God was there. They saw a smoke coming out, and the people, they began to accept Jesus, and some be baptized in the Holy Spirit. There was other families that were burying next to his grave. They left their grave where they were buried, coming to where Smith Wigglesworth was, being buried and accepted. And in the cemetery, at the going of this journal, so many people got saved as they were coming to bury their own. Because the presence of God was there. Now he says, <laughs> now, I agree to that. Because it says, I'll ask the Father and he'll give you another help to be with you for how long? Forever. Even in my grave, he'll be there. Glory to God. He'll be there to convict people. You know, there will be that residue that a man of God led him. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. And this is the proverb. There are people who are not receiving this man. He is a person. He is a being. He is holy. Because it's neither sees him nor hears him. I pray today you have heard and have seen the Holy Spirit through my preaching. You know him. For he dwells within you and he will be in you. He is in us. And this is where I want to end today. He is in us. We are no longer chained. We are set free. The gospel of the truth is upon us. Regardless of the color, the race, the creed. Black, white, short, tall, skin, fat, whatever it is. He doesn't. Don't worry about it. Just be a vessel. Anyone who calls your enemies to tremble. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every demon must free. At the mention of the glorious Holy Spirit, signs and the wonders must manifest. And allow God to come in a mighty way. Praise be to God. I wish somebody today didn't hear David Shemenda, but he heard the Holy Spirit. That was speaking through me. And your life will never be the same again. Because God wants to change, transform, renew our mind. He wants to fill us with his glory. He wants to pull the power of the Holy Ghost. He wants to change you now. He's able to perform Signs and wonders, miracles. He's able to do greater things in your life. I want you to allow him to take over your life today. Allow him and to say, Holy Spirit, take over my life on this day of Pentecost. Carry me through the trials and temptations of this world. Grant me breakthrough. Grant me an anointing. 
that breaks the yoke of slavery and bondage. Grant me the freedom whom the Son of God set free. He is free indeed. Oh God, help us today. Allow the Holy Spirit to touch you. Allow the Holy Spirit to take over your life. Receive this teaching. May this teaching be your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. And may you enjoy as you fellowship with the Spirit of God. Now, if you are not born again, you don't know Jesus, this Holy Spirit cannot be in you because he wants to be in the body of a person who have yielded. But it's not too late. I want you to say these words after me. Say a word of repentance. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I ask you now to forgive me of all my sins in Jesus' name. Cleanse me. Cleanse my life. Cast me not away from your presence, dear Lord. Restore the joy of salvation unto me. Dear God, Help me to be strong in trying times. Help me to be loving when there is unloving situations. Help me to be long-suffering. Help me to be meek. Help me to be gentle. Help me to receive you fully. I receive you now, Jesus. You are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now the fact that you have received the Jesus as your personal Savior. I want to pray for you to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Right now. Wherever you are. In your bedroom. In your car. In your room. Whatever. Maybe you're seated with your family with your children, with your friends, somebody has come to visit you, tell them this is the most important time. I want the Holy Spirit. Say these words after me. Dear Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I ask you now, to come inside me. Holy Spirit, I give you my body as your temple that you can reside in fully and totally. I yield my life total to you. Lord, from the last part of my hair to the last part of my nails on my toes. Infuse me with the power from on high. Baptize me with the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Transform me now. Lord, help me to love like you love. Through the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. Touch me, Holy Spirit. Touch me now. Transform me now. In Jesus' mighty name. Fill me with your glory. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come and transform me today. Help me. Never to be the same again. Never, never, never again will I return to the vomit. Allow me, Jesus, to be filled with the power from on high. 
Full of fresh on me. Full of fresh on me. New power of the Holy Spirit. Come inside my life. And transform me now. Holy fire. Drench your presence. Burn all the chaff. All the dross. Remove it. Now God. Fill me. In Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Now we're going to pray for. The civility in the community. And all over the United States. For we have been hit with so many things. The pandemic. And as well as. The commotion. We also pray for. George Freud's family, that God will grant them peace and they may the soul of George rest in eternal peace. But may those who are used of the devil to bring destruction be dealt by the presence of God and repent in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for this nation, the United States. For the evil that has come upon this land. We plead the blood of Jesus. That our God you save and restore civility to this nation. You come this tradition. And, oh God, we pray that the family of George Freud, they'll put George to rest in peace and in honor without any distraction. Father, we plead that you wipe out tears from their eyes. And the so many of those that have felt injustice, you bring healing to them. Father, now we pray for those who are demon possessed that are going oh God to do the things that are unlawful we plead in the blood of Jesus that oh God you release your anointing that you stop this madness and unrighteousness of destroying the shops and destroying the building and burning homes and burning cars oh God in the name of Jesus we plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that there will be peace in the land. There will be sensibility in the land. Lord, we ask you right now in Jesus' mighty holy name that yes, indeed, O oh God Almighty, the joy of the Lord will be our strength. Lord, we pray that yes, We'll voice our opinion, but not with a destructive measure. Lord, we pleaded the blood of Jesus to come upon America. We pleaded the blood of Jesus to come upon the world and to eradicate and remove this pandemic disease that is known as coronavirus. We pleaded the blood of Jesus for the healing. We pray for the nurses, oh God, and the doctors and the hospital workers. That, oh God, you be with them. We pray for the police officers. We pray for the governors. We pray for the president. We pray for the leaders in the nation of God. That in these difficult and trying, tumultuous times, you grant them the wisdom to understand, oh God, what is relevant, oh God. Lord, we ask it for the Holy Spirit to descend on this Pentecost day. To come upon this land. Lord I declare and declare. That the spirit of God. Will come upon this land. In Jesus holy name. Have thy own way to and forevermore. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name. Amen. Now as I said earlier on. That if you have problems. Uh, and you don't know what is going on. You're scared. You're black. You're white. You don't understand what is happening. 
please you can email us at homecity uh, info dot com gmail you know info you find the address there or you can inbox us there'll be someone throughout the week here if you let us know who can come and wait for you and we'll pray with you and we'll show you the way we are here we pray for the land and we pray for the leaders that rule of our lives that we may live a tranquil life we believe in peace like they say in hebrew shalom shalom